of all, I couldn't be happier to be here. I can reflect back on a few years ago when I was sitting out, sitting out there like you are. And it was really interesting, you know, I'm sure many of you, if you've, been, if you've been here for the first time, you've had that kind of water hose effect. You've had that effect of too much information. And then many of you, and I've talked with many of you for several days now, you're trying to figure out how can I go back and explain everything that I've learned here to a group of people that don't want to change. Well, I had the very same challenge. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that, my experience, my journey with some really cool technology that I learned here that I partner with you all. And then uh, how do we translate that into exponential uh, uh, educational opportunities for students? So first, I'm going to start off with a story. It's very appropriate right now in this political season that we're in. Uh, right in the middle, you see Joe. Joe is a plumber. You all may recall Joe the plumber from back in 2008. Joe, about a year ago, Joe had no health issues whatsoever. He had one physician. He occasionally took an ibuprofen just for uh, a sore elbow. But then a year later, Joe developed a cardiovascular problem. He now has diabetes, and he also has migraines. And every time he developed a new condition, he got sent to a new, a new uh, physician. And that physician prescribed the two or three medications that he was really familiar with. Before you knew it, Joe was now taking about 13 or 14 medications in about a year, and Joe was making an assumption that all of the physicians are communicating with each other. They're getting on a phone call on Friday morning, and they're talking about Joe for a half hour, how his progress is going, and the medications that he's on. But we know that couldn't be further from the truth. In actuality, the only individual right now that knows all of the medications that Joe is on, hopefully, if he's going to one pharmacy, is the pharmacist. So we have to correct that. So about a year ago, I went to a hospital executive meeting, and I put this slide up, and I said, you know, tell me, pick one medication from every column, and then tell me why you picked that one medication. And there was really interesting conversation that ensued from there. The actual fact of the matter is, uh, most physicians or providers and prescribers don't have the muscle memory to, to remember why they chose the medications they chose. Back in the 90s, we actually had, you know, drug reps that looked like either Angelina Jolie and or Brad Pitt. And then the 2000s came with the HMOs, and now they were told which two medications they could prescribe. But now we're in a point where, beginning in 2011, 70% of all the medications they had commonly prescribed are now generic and on the market. And so now you get into a, a really uh, challenging scenario of how do you pick one medication if you really don't have the muscle memory of how you were choosing those medications to begin with. So part of the, another part of the journey as we started our school, we're fairly new. I've been talking about the future from day one. I keep talking the future, the future, the future of medicine. It's really going to be exciting. And my students, they came back to me a couple of years ago, and they said, you know, Dean, you keep talking about the future, but I don't see it. When I go out into my clinical experience right now, when I go into Walgreens, CVS, and a whole host of other locations, I don't see the future you're talking about. And it did create a very challenging problem. It was right about the same time that I came here, at the time Future Med, but now Exponential Medicine, because I really wanted to impress upon them how futuristic things can be. So, uh, just so you know, even though I'm a, a, an, an administrator, I'm still in the clinic, I've been a part of our Department of Family Medicine doing metabolic syndrome and anticoagulation clinics for about 17 years, and so I'm working with our physicians on a brand new prescriber care plan. Uh, and we, we're doing what we call prescribe a medication, prescribe an app, and prescribe knowledge. And we want that to be in a dedicated format that will actually appear in the electronic medical record. And we want that transferred to the patient so that they have all the information that we have in a personal health record. So it's very important to us that we're now trying and going through the steps of developing exactly this new paradigm. I always love to put this up because it really does talk to the system that we're trying to get to, that we're desperately trying to build here in our, here in our country, around accountable care organizational structures, patient-centered medical homes, interprofessional practices. And so what you're looking at is me making an attempt to now put pharmacy in, into the system in a way that we've never commonly thought about it before. If many of you, if you work in a hospital system, 
you're already very commonly seeing pharmacists and nurse practitioners and, and dietitians and social workers in that environment. But when we go out into the community, we don't find that anymore. Really what you find is a bunch of silos. You find a physician office with nurse practitioners and a fee-for-service driven system. And I'm saying we need to really work on that. But the other challenge we need to do is really work on how do we include pharmacy. So I'm going to show a video um, here on some of the things that we're doing in terms of the pharmacy of the future. I had an opportunity to build the pharmacy of the future. Now, when I took it back to the administrators for the building and I showed them this, I said, this is the pharmacy of the future. I know you all see it. And they said, you know, I'm going to go with you on this. I'm going to have a little bit of faith. So I took that, and that became this. And after I fired about two different architectural firms to get to this point, we actually got it right. And so now this is actually up and going. But what you're finding are components of what you can't, commonly cannot find in a retail pharmacy or a community pharmacy anywhere. Uh, let me bring your attention to three areas very quickly. EMR for pharmacists, what I call our mHealth Apple Store concept, and then pharmacogenomics there in the left corner. I've been hiding in plain sight about pharmacogenomics and personalized medicine for about five years now. And we've already built a care plan that really talks about how do you go about doing that. Starting there on the far right, you see, we were already talking about building a pharmacogenomic company and then building what we call the molecular clinical pharmacist and then taking that all the way over to the fact that after we've done that testing, how do you build and create a specialized, med individualized medicine for that individual patient? So I began working with a company, a local manufacturer by the name of CoreRx. And just about a year ago, I sat them down, I had them sign NDAs, and I said, I got this idea. And let me tell you what we're going to do. And lo and behold, as I began talking to them about what the future should hold, all of a sudden this came out, a 3D printed medication. It was exactly the idea that I thought I was the first in the world to begin talking about doing. But I was really happy to see it happen. And now we're going to take that technology eventually and we're going to put it directly into that pharmacy of the future that I just talked about. Now comes the video, what else are we doing? Mobile health technology, the biggest challenge we're having is the fact that consumers and commoditization of all these wearables, I've got two on right now, are way ahead of our ability to collect that data and use it for meaningful ch uh, change for a patient care. Dad. At lunch, we pulled out what we were told is one of his weaknesses, tortilla chips. Will you partake? Oh yeah, it's hard to resist. Okay, come yeah. on. Handful. They are loaded with carbohydrates which trigger glucose. Yeah, this is, this is, this, this uh, is my guilty pleasure this, here. So. Out comes his cell phone. Yeah. I mean, I can look at my glucose every minute. I, I don't want to look at it every minute, but I can. And so I can just turn it on, my glucose. Fortunately, I haven't had enough chips here yet, but it's, only, it's 107. How does it know that? Well, it has a, I have a sensor on. Where? And uh, Well, I have it on my abdomen, but I'll show you what it looks like. It's uh, like that, touching the skin. Okay. So that sends a wireless signal to this. Yes. And if you were a diabetic, and you had this, you could then send this message to your physician or to your own computer. Oh, yeah. And you could start to see triggers and trends and follow this. Sure. Oh, yeah. And there goes the lifestyle change. You got it. So it was a really cool thing. Right here, I had the opportunity to meet Dr. Topol, Eric Topol. Many of you are familiar with him. And it was really funny. I'll never forget, he was sitting right along the right side, and I'm walking up to him. I felt like a complete stalker or a groupie because I had been reading about him. I had been watching and when I was walking over, he looked up at me and he said, hey, you're Dean Sneed. I just about fell over. I said, how do you know that? He said, you know, I monitor you on Twitter. You got some great ideas. But that's what exponential medicine here in this environment can do for you. So let me show you a couple of things. We're taking these devices and we're now incorporating them into the patient care experience. And so here we talk about diabetic control, diabetic monitoring. Well, with Bluetooth glucometers, we have this in our pharmacy. Uh, let me give you an example of something I show here, just to kind of speed it up, just for time's sake. On the left, many of you have already seen that on your Apple, on your iPhone. I said, what if we took the very same information and we now did it for glucose, LDL, cholesterol, uh, systolic blood pressure? My prediction through predictive analytics, instead of waiting 90 days to figure out whether, whether or not the diabetic medication will work, 
I'm predicting that by day 14 in our pharmacy, we can actually use that information to predict if we're going to hit the mark or not. And that's the kind of background work that we're working on right now. Because in an accountable care organizational structure, you don't want to find out on day 85 that that patient or a group of your patients are not going to hit the mark for you in terms of that uh, PQRS reporting. Uh, we're doing it for blood pressure, and so we have this available. And so this is the pharmacy, and I'll show you a few uh, other pictures in a moment, but the really frustrating thing about it is the fact that in other industries, we've already figured all of this out. We already have components of this that we really talk about. And so we, you know, I hired a consulting company, an informatics company, and we went back and we said, what's already out there that we can apply here in terms of analytics? What can we do inside of the pharmacy right now and take from other industries? If you look in the far right corner, the Internet of Things. Well, now the Internet of Medical Things is out there. How do we take that and incorporate that into a format? So here are pictures of the pharmacy. When I look at it, even now, when I walk in, I walked in last Friday, it feels like Star Trek. And it's open and it's doing very well. But the most important thing is the fact that we are actually now teaching our students how to think differently, how to not have that linear mode, how to not be held up by the obstacle and the inertia of healthcare. So now when they come to me, they no longer tell me that I don't see what you're talking about. Not only are they seeing it, they're feeling it, they're experiencing it, and now I'm challenging them to come up with their own ideas. So we all know the future is going to happen. And that's what I'm telling my pharmacy colleagues right now. Red box for pharmacy is on the way. So we must think differently. We must change. I agree with Peter from last night. I don't know what education will hold over the next seven years. But I do know that right now, we can take 100 people at a time and change their mindset about how they go out and try to transform and change the world. So with that, I'll just share with you that I do understand exactly what my purpose is for walking around. I would also like to share with you that if there are any companies out there, I want to partner with you. Give me your technology right now. Let me put it in the hands of my student. Let me be an alpha site for you. The, the best thing that can happen is that they will actually come and come to you upon graduation and say, I have to incorporate that technology when I, when I begin my clinical practice. Also, I want to say in the spirit of Dr. Ornish from last night, I love you all. Thank you very much. <laughs>